What if the reason you feel flat, unmotivated, and withdrawn isn't a mindset problem at all, but an immune response rewiring your brain? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining how chronic stress escalates into depression by activating immune cells, blunting dopamine, and weakening your brain's energy systems. I'll guide the flow so you can connect the latest findings to what you're feeling day to day. I'm Alara Skye. The central idea is straightforward. Long-term stress repeatedly triggers your stress response systems and pushes immune activity into a persistent, low-grade inflammatory state. A new Nature Communication study shows this isn't just about hormones like cortisol. It's about immune cells invading protective brain layers and shaping behavior. Key insight for why standard antidepressants miss the mark for many. Researchers used chronic social defeat stress to model ongoing social pressure and then watch the meninges, the layers protecting your brain. After repeated stress, neutrophils, the first responder immune cells, surged into these borders. The animals shifted toward anxiety-like behavior and anhedonia, avoiding social contact and ignoring normal reward cues. That pattern suggests immune activation near your brain is a driver, not a bystander. The magnitude and persistence were notable. Blood neutrophils rose about 5.6 fold, and meningeal neutrophils rose roughly 1.3 to 1.7 fold. The higher the neutrophils, the more social withdrawal and anxiety-like behavior. Importantly, meningeal levels stayed elevated for at least 24 hours after stress and took about a week to normalize, even as blood levels settled sooner. Evidence of a lingering immune imprint at the brain's border. Where did those cells come from? Not just distant limb bone marrow. Many were recruited from skull bone marrow and trafficked through tiny vascular channels into the meninges. In practical terms, stress triggers a localized immune response next to your brain which helps explain why your mood can pivot so quickly under relentless social pressure. Once there, the neutrophils weren't quiet. They displayed a strong type 1 interferon signature and reduced MHC2 expression, pointing to dysregulated immune crosstalk. Some were physically larger and more immature, primed for action, and their numbers nearly tripled with stress. Crucially, Blocking interferon signaling with an antibody against the interferon alpha-beta receptor reversed many stress effects, including restoring pleasure-seeking. A companion line of evidence shows how these immune signals hijack mood circuits. Elevated cytokines under chronic stress suppress dopamine and shift your brain's priorities from seeking rewards to scanning for danger. The result is less drive, more vigilance, and a default toward withdrawal an adaptive survival mode in short bursts that becomes corrosive when it doesn't switch off. Specific cytokines matter. Interleukin-6 and TNF alpha rise during sustained stress and can cross into the brain. They alter firing in the prefrontal cortex and dampen activation in the ventral striatum and nucleus accumbens on functional MRI when you encounter positive cues. That blunted reward response explains why normal activities feel joyless and effortful, even when you want to engage. Energy production in your brain takes a hit as well. In a psychoneuroendocrinology study using chronic unpredictable mild stress, animals developed depression-like behaviors alongside clear mitochondrial dysfunction. Brain ATP production fell, while inflammatory markers like interleukin, 1-beta, and tumor necrosis factor alpha climbed in regions tied to memory and emotion, including the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. The damage traced to key steps of the electron transport chain, particularly complexes that wine and four, raising oxidative stress and injuring neuronal membranes and proteins. When researchers provided antioxidants or mitochondrial supporting compounds, behavior improved and mitochondrial function partially rebounded. The dysfunction wasn't immediate, it worsened over weeks, underscoring why early action matters. Inflammation and mitochondrial breakdown amplified one another. More inflammation meant worse mitochondrial injury, which then drove additional cytokine release, 
a feedback loop of low energy and high inflammation that locks you into fatigue, brain fog, and low motivation. This biology helps explain why symptoms can persist even after the original stressor fades. Here's what this means for you. Feeling flat under pressure isn't a character flaw. It reflects immune activation that rebalances your brain toward caution and away from reward while depleting cellular energy. Recognizing the mechanism shifts the conversation toward strategies that reduce chronic stress inputs and support healthier signaling before the cycle becomes entrenched. One nutrition strategy from Dr. Mercola's article is to add healthy carbohydrates deliberately to prevent stress-driven cortisol spikes. A carbohydrate-rich approach lowered cortisol and improved mood after stress and research, he cited. A clear target is 250 grams per day from fruits and white rice, then gradually add root vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes and squash, and finally minimally processed whole grains. He cautions against long-term fasting or extended time restricted eating if it keeps cortisol chronically high. Movement is a second pillar. Regular exercise reduces cortisol, releases endorphins, improves sleep, and strengthens your resilience to future stress. If you're not currently active, starting now shifts multiple stress pathways at once and builds capacity to handle challenges without flipping into threat mode. Mindset practices have measurable effects. Intentionally thinking positively through mindfulness, gratitude journaling, or time outdoors promotes neurochemistry that interrupts the stress loop. As your outlook steadies, immune signals calm, and the reward system responds more normally to everyday experiences. Creativity is another lever. Making art, writing, or playing music activates reward pathways, lowers stress hormones, and restores a sense of agency. Using creative problem-solving in daily challenges also reduces perceived threat and helps you regain momentum when stress feels relentless. Physical connection matters. Simple, regular hugs release oxytocin, which counterbalances stress responses and strengthens emotional stability. Building touch and social contact into routine interactions supports mental health by shifting biology towards safety and connection. Let's end with a clear action you can take today. Choose one of these levers and apply it immediately. Increase your healthy carbohydrate intake toward 250 grams using fruit and white rice as your base. Schedule a consistent exercise session. Write three items in a gratitude journal. Create something for 20 minutes or give and receive genuine hugs with people you trust. Track how your energy, mood, and motivation shift over the next week. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.